Today is the work day number one for the uh, Redlands Theater Festival people, but at this new group. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that about a theater thing. And when does this shindig start? 9.30. I'm late. The map thing says it should take me 10 minutes to get there. I'm going to count on 15. And since the fire department is taking over a lot of the buildings surrounding the theater where they would practice and hold and have things uh, because their fire station is being worked on, I have no idea where to park. I am not from around here. I don't know these people. I don't. I know nothing. I know nothing. Pretty cloudy. Possible rain. It rained last night. There's a lot of gray clouds, and it can rain in Redlands without it being raining here. It's just far enough. So I don't know. Don't know. I had a wild hair up my butt to find a song. It's a Swedish song that my mom's mother, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, used to sing to my mom. So I knew it had to be from the 20s or 30s. And I knew how the, t the melody went. And I searched and went down the rabbit hole of Swedish music on uh, in YouTube. And I finally came upon one. They were giving the life story of Ollie, uh, Schaltfoot, I, I can't remember Abba without thinking about it. Um, it's a guy, his name was really Peterson, but he went by this comical name. He wore a silly wig and a hat with a flower and a scarf. And he was a comic singer, an entertainer. And he was the quintessential Swedish guy. And this particular song, Nicolina, N-I-K-O-L-I-N-A, was known almost as a Swedish anthem because people liked it so much. It's a song about a man that loves a woman, but her father says, no way, Jose. And he, he writes her a note to meet her, to meet him in the, in the woods that evening. He shows up and there's a cloaked person in a cloak and he thinks it's her and he unveils the cloak it's the father with a great big wooden club and he starts hitting him and chasing him and he runs away <laughs> then he writes the girl and she writes him back she says we'll have to wait until the old geezer has gone dead and gone before we can get together but I still love you <laughs> yeah <laughs> But it, you know, it's, you play it in a died in the wool Swedish person will, will know it's a Swedish song. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Look at this. Mmm, it smells good. The flowering trees and bushes smell really good through here. This path is a long path, but oh, there's people up there. Look where you can see these trees up, these up here, that's an orchard, an orange orchard. You can see mountains in the background maybe, lots of houses and stuff. It smells good because there's a lot of rose bushes and it was a giant fig tree. Those are orange trees down in there. That's where I was walking. Good God, how much further is it? This is the ticket booth. So I'm at the top of the hill now. That's right around this corner. This is where the stage is. I think. Oh, there it is. Down there is a parking lot for Kimberly Clark. 
I mean the Kimberly house. There was a woman that was married in the, to the Kimberly Clark family. The toilet paper, paper towels type family. And behind that giant mansion that they used to live in. I'll try to get a picture of it later. This is back behind the stage. I guess I'll put makeups on here and costumes and everything. Things up there are props. Here's this ladder, electric ladder thing. Here's a couch and a monitor, I guess, so you can see what's going on on stage. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. A fridge, a freezer with a lock on it for unruly patrons. That's the Kimberly house. The, this is backstage. Stage right. Over there is stage left. And this scenery that they have on here is from last season from uh, Noises Off, which is the double decker scenery. I have to find somebody to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe if I just walk around looking like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a big squirrel. He's... Yeah, you are. The fire engine's gonna come around. Hey, buddy. Just wondering what's under here. Looks like ladders and shovels and... rakes. Prop area with all, without all that crap in here. Just people. The lady in the red is who I need to speak to. So this is what it looks like if you're on stage here acting, singing, or whatnot. Giant bubble gun. Oh, Spencer would be so jealous. He'd say, mine. <laughs> I decided to help trim the bamboo. I'm trimming it higher than most people because there aren't all people to come to see these shows and you know, go through the jungle. And bamboo is very, very, grows very rapidly, so don't have to worry about damaging it. That's all that's left. The rest of it that we're putting bags and they're going home now. They, I guess they're working on brochures. These people are finally tired from goofing off. I guess it's about time to go. Strawberries, wild strawberries. I don't know if they'll taste good or not. But over there is a fig tree. Somewhere over there is a fig tree that dropped a bunch of figs in the street. So I'm going home with some treasures. Oh. Interesting palm tree. And how it grows and it's way tall. And the things break off and that's what they look like leaving these stubby things on the tree. Bizarre, huh? I decided not to go on the road. I'd come this way and then get back on the road, but now I can't find a place to get back on the road. <laughs> oh no. Palm leaf graveyard. I'm gonna work my way down there. I'm through going through orchards and most all the oranges have picked, been picked off. There are flowers on here that smell okay. The bees think so. There's lots of bees. Drink it all, babies. I hope to find the road. Now up there on the left, I don't know if you see in the very back, is dark green. That's where I was. That's the theater up in there. Neat looking thing. These are neat looking cactus. Apparently they had a wedding or something up here today. 
Mary Kimberly Shirk, an advocate for women's education and acting president of Shrips College during World War II, made a gift of her home, Kimberly Crest, to the people of Redlands. Architecture and she designed 1897. This is an awesome house. A really cool, great big old house. I just spoke to someone about getting a tour. I might come on Thursday, take a tour. No, photo no photography or anything inside. Oh, isn't that nifty? Then they have some terraces down there where they've been having some kind of reception for a wedding or something. Look at the things on top of the... Isn't that nifty? Well, back to the car. Isn't that a nifty old house? That's huge. And that one's pretty big too. There's a lot of those houses around here. I'm heading on home now. Look who's waiting for me. What do you want, Bubba? <laughs> Three oranges that fell off the tree. Two of whatever this is. I have no idea what this is. That'll be interesting to find out. The tree is real smooth skinned, light colored bark with knobby things around the bottom, so I'll have to look it up. These are figs that had fallen off of a fig tree. And lots of little tiny uh, not raw. Wild. Wild strawberries. That's what I'm thinking of. Open up the figs and that's what they look like. I don't think they're ripe. I think they're supposed to be kind of a Fig Newton fig color. Kind of brown. I think. They're not ripe. Now these, I think they're a different kind of an orange. I think they're going to be bitter. And I still have to find out what this sucker is. The strawberries, because they're wild, they don't really have any flavor. Maybe to a rabbit, but I think man has done hybrid with hybrid with uh, strawberries for a long time to have them taste good, because those don't taste like anything. I don't know what the green things are. I'll have to look it up. Oh my god!